everyone, and welcome to Gruff Talk, where each week we take a deep dive into all the ways we can feel better, look better, live better, and age better. I'm your host, Barbara Hannah Grufferman. I am really excited about today's episode because it's all about achieving your goals. I'm a big fan of goals, but they aren't always easy to achieve, especially if you get in your own way by letting your fears stop you in your tracks. If you've ever wanted to make a major change in your life, whether in your career, a relationship, your health, starting an exercise program, you know, fill in the blank, whatever, you know how daunting it can be and scary. The journey from visualizing your goals to actually making them happen can feel like an insurmountable gap. And that can often make you just stop before you even get started, right? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. If you have ever felt that way, or if you feel that way right now, this episode is definitely for you because today we're joined by someone who's, I think, figured it out. Sonia Satra is a former soap opera star turned mind-body expert, and she's about to release her debut book, which I've read, and it's great, What If It Were Easy? using movement and mindset to create success in life, love, and business. In fact, it's going to launch in October. Sonia's book not only tackles this common struggle head on, but offers a solution, a game-changing approach she calls Modicize. This powerful method breaks down the barriers between you and your goals so you can face your fears and crush your goals. But before we dive into the conversation I had with Sonia, let me tell you a little bit about her. Sonia is a former soap opera star, and if you're a soap opera fan, you may have seen her on One Life to Live and A Guiding Light. And she's also an award-winning motivational speaker and a coach who focuses on the mind-body connection and how this connection can be used to achieve your goals. So pop in your earbuds and get ready to crush your next goal. Stay tuned. Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome back to Gruff Talk. I am so excited about my guest today, who is Sonia Satra. And you may have seen her on A Guiding Light and One Life to Live. She is a former soap opera actress, but she made a major pivot into becoming an award-winning speaker and also a coach. So we're going to talk about that, but we're also going to talk about her new book, which I'm going to hold up right now. For those of you who are watching on YouTube, you can see it, but there will be links to it in the show notes and underneath the video. And it is called What if it were easy? Yeah, we all want that, don't we? (laughs) Using movement and mindset to create success in life, love, and business. It kind of covers everything. Welcome to Gruff Talk, Sonia. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. So, okay. I mentioned you were once a soap opera star on two major shows, and then you made a pivot to becoming a speaker and a coach and many other things outside of acting. Tell us about that. Why the pivot? Yeah. So, you know, in hindsight, when you're going through the pivot, you don't always necessarily know why you're doing everything you do. But I I know in my heart, there was always some desire to help people, to make a difference. And I think in hindsight, I always looked at TV or or entertainment is I'm going to do the movie that's going to change the world, you know? (laughs) And the reality is that doesn't always happen all of the time in that world. And so I was very, very interested in mindset. I personally had a life coach way before people even knew what a life coach was. In fact, it was Tony Robbins head coach who coached me. And I knew. Oh, well, you see, so you went right to I the did, top. I did. I did. Well, I became, <laughs> you know, I was like, the, to sur- you didn't fool around. <laughs> <laughs> to survive in acting, I realized, you know, it's all mindset. It's not always the best actor, but it's the person who can persevere, who can withstand the constant, constant rejection. So 
I really studied mindset as much as I studied anything else. And I was fascinated by it. And, you know, actors are studying mindset too, as they're studying characters. So it all kind of fit together. And also I have to say, being an an actor, you were, I think it was an easy pivot for you to become a speaker in front of many, many people. I mean, this is something you're used to. When you give a talk, you're kind of acting, right? You know, they said that to me. And I remember my very first, I joined Toastmasters, my first Toastmasters speech, I was so nervous. I was like ridiculously nervous. And I'm like, but you're an actress. You do this all the time. And I'm like, I've spent my entire life learning how to have a fourth wall. (laughs) Now I have to break it and actually speak to the audience. And I'm speaking my words. I'm not handed a script. So it actually was a bit more of a transition. Good point. That is a difference. It was. It's a much more vulnerable Mm -hmm. process to do that. So yes, I think there is a little bit of practice in being able to do things in front of people, but it definitely took another level of being able to address them and to come from my heart and say what I had to say. But I think in terms of the transition, um, you know, I was going along and then I had had all this coaching, studied mindset, and then I was pregnant with my daughter and not acting as much. And I thought, you know, I became the person everybody would come to to ask for help because I'd studied this stuff so much. I used it in my own life. So I thought maybe I'll just get a coaching, you know, certification just for fun. And I loved it. And then after my daughter was born, I tried to do everything, coaching. I'd gotten involved in speaking and acting and, uh, I realized I wasn't doing anything very well. And that was the moment when I realized I really love this. I really love having an impact and being able to help other people go for their dreams. And so that was the time when I really started to make the shift. So let's segue into What If It Were Easy, your very first book, which is launching in October, which is very exciting. You know, the first book is always, uh, there's something so special about it. And this book is very special. I'm going to hold it up again for those of you who are watching on YouTube. What made you decide to write this book and why now? So I think it was a culmination of all of what I was doing and all that I had learned. And I wanted to have it in a place that was accessible for everybody. And also Moda Size is is different. It's this combination of mindset and movement or exercise. And it's done in a way that hasn't necessarily been done before. And so I thought that having a place where it could really be explained, I could guide people through it. There are some videos that will help people do it. And I just thought that would be a way to really be able to share it with a larger audience and explain what it actually is. <laughs> well, yeah, let's segue right into that. I mean, I wanted to ask you exactly what Moda Size is. I mean, to the audience, what Sonia was just referring to is Moda Size. That is the name of her program that is spelled out very well and clearly in her new book. So let's go right into that. So what is Moda Size? And how can it help people to get unstuck? Because that's really what I I got out of the book Mm -hmm. when I read it was, you know, you're stuck. You don't know how to get to the next place. You don't know where even you want to go. It's all about changing your mindset with movement. Explain this to us and how can we incorporate it, like some of those tools into our lives? Sure. So... Modicize the name actually came from Modi, motivational exercise, the size from exercise. So that was the hybrid of Modicize. And that's what I used to say. It's motivational exercise. But then people often thought, oh, great, you're going to motivate me to exercise. And I'm like, well, yes. <laughs> that's and, funny. Um, okay. That's well, not if you goal. read the book, you'll know that's not the case. <laughs> the, 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 <laughs> Although moving is a big part of it. <laughs> the unexpected byproduct is people who don't like to exercise actually love motorcycles because you're thinking about something else. So really what it is, is it's a life coaching process. So it's a series, a seven step process of questions guided around a goal, around something that you're wanting to do. And if you don't know, there is the question of what if it were easy? What would you do? Because often 
when you ask that question, it gives you permission to really just say what it is that, well, if it were easy, I would do this. And that's usually what's in your heart. That is what you would want to do. And so that's a good starting point. And then it guides you through these seven questions to really help you achieve that goal. And the reason it's done for exercise is exercise is so powerful. Like we, we put it in this little box of it's the only thing you could do to just get fit and to, you know, fit into some smaller size jeans or whatever. And yes, it helps with that. Great. But a lot happens in your brain when you move. There's a, something called BDNF that's released. Uh, it actually creates new neural brain cells and the neural pathways can be connected. So you can essentially rewire your brain towards what it is that you're wanting. And all of those good feeling endorphins, not only just the endorphins, but also serotonin, dopamine are secreted and it taps the motivational part of your brain. So it also makes you more focused, more creative, and it's more motivated. So it's really taking all of these amazing powers that come from moving your body and then being very intentional about guiding your mind to a goal. So it's changing your physiology, which makes you feel better. At the same time, you're working your mindset. And when you put it together, phew, anything is possible. <laughs> Well, you know, I'm a big fan <laughs> and yeah. believer in moving your body and moving your body more and yeah. moving your body throughout the day. Yes. And there's just too much science behind all the health benefits, Absolutely. both short term and long term, but also, as you just pointed out, beyond the physical benefits, the health benefits, it's also so opens your mind to new ways of thinking yes. of, you know, kind of thinking, I had to use that term outside the box and to be more creative. As you said, I know personally, mm -hmm. I come up with my best ideas. I solve problems. I come up with solutions when I'm running. Exactly. I mean, when I'm moving my body and running. And so I know it really works for me. I mean, something I love to talk about too, is like Beethoven. I'm a big Beethoven groupie Oh, wow. and Beethoven would write his most amazing music while he was walking through town. Oh, I mean, gosh, that's like, that's, that's a known fact about Beethoven. And, and there's many, many, many other stories like that. So let's talk about visualization. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. Oh no, I was just going to say one of the reasons why it came up for me was because after my son was born, I was at the gym, you know, I had my like 20 minute workout, I was running to the gym doing a little bit. And, you know, they have all these TVs and they're pumping out a lot of like, oh, this time negative news. And so I was getting caught up and that's what I was thinking about was the news and the story and how depressing it was. And I left very frustrated and I knew all this mindset stuff worked. And I just thought, what if you did combine it? And that's the thing. So you really want to also be careful about what you are thinking about when you exercise, because it does start to come into your body in a very different way. So when you shift it right. and direct it towards something that's positive, it will really, really have a domino effect in your life. So back to you and visualization. <laughs> yeah. So visualization, a big part of what it is that you're talking about in the book and kind of envisioning that goal and, and then moving while you're in, it, it, it just all works. It does work. People face challenges and obstacles when they're thinking about making changes in their lives. Like, mm. oh, I want to, you know, get a different job or start that company or whatever it is, fill in the blank. They can even put obstacles in their own way. So what are some of the most common obstacles that you have found when you're talking with people, working with people with this program? I think out of the gate comes some of the sort of uh, more surface. I don't have time. I don't have money. <laughs> I don't know if I could really do that. Mm -hmm. I don't, I, you know... I don't know when, how am I going to make that work? You know, like, so that's usually the, the first level. Then it starts. Then once you go a little deeper, then it becomes more about like, I don't know if I'm good enough. I don't know if I can really make this change. That is what I, when people really care about something, when it's something they really want, then it becomes more weighty and it feels more overwhelming. 
and bigger. And like you said, then we start putting in any obstacle that will like sort of justify our reason not to go forward. I would think fear of failure too, just kind of right off the bat Absolutely. must be there too. Fear oh yeah, failure, I'd like to do I'm this, but enough. I'm... Yeah, fear of failure and mm -hmm. fear of, you know, it's interesting, some level of fear of success comes into you. You know, it's going to change my life. What does that mean? We get used to being in our patterns and when you suddenly look at any kind of life change that feels scary, even when it's good. So do you have any examples of people who have used your program or that you've worked with? Because you, I know, coach individuals, but also you coach through companies who bring you on board to help their employees. So do you have any examples and like positive stories about people who have used this program? I have so many um, stories. Just give us a good uh, one. So a good one. <laughs> well, I'll give you two from two different spectrums. One was a person who was really feeling stuck and she really didn't know what she wanted to do. She was in a, a very sort of a dead end job, not very creative. And she was so creative. And during this class, she came up with an entire business idea where she could use her artistic talents. And she created a whole greeting card idea where she was painting on it. So she did all of these beautiful paintings and sayings, and she started to sell these cards on Etsy. And that grew into opening up a whole world of creativity. She then started to sell her art. She also started to get into jewelry. She now works and designs jewelry for a company. So it really opened up her world. That's a good success that story. That was a huge. And it started with, I had this little idea, maybe I'll just do this on the side. And it was like, it, again, small step, it just sort of opened. And then on another extreme, you know, often people think because it's exercise, it's fitness related. And I always say it's really, I would say three quarters of the people's, their goals are not fitness related. But this person happened to be morbidly obese and she desperately needed to lose weight and she has lost in conjunction she did it gave her the courage to do the surgery but she did so she did do the gastric mm -hmm. bypass but she used modicize leading up to it to get her into the position to do it and she's used it all the way since i remember she was like sent me her first gym membership look at me i'm going to the gym <laughs> She has lost 300 pounds. Oh, that's good. Yeah, it's good. So 300. Oh my gosh. 300. Wow. Yes. Massive. It's changed her life in so, so many ways. And she's I'm continuing. I'm so happy for her. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I hope that she continues. So she really should continue with the program. Absolutely. And she does. Right? She that's in your book. So she can stick with it. Well, she does. And she's like, it's right. not anymore. It's not just modicized. It's a way of life now for her. So whenever she gets anxious or frustrated or depressed or her place where she would used to go to food, she would now go for a walk and do mindset or she happens to like swimming. That's also good for her body. So she created this thing where every lap she would, you know, release stuff that she didn't want. And then she would pull in stuff that she did. And so she, um, you can modify it. That's the beauty of it. You can modify it for whatever your body shape is and whatever physical abilities you have. You can make it super hard and aerobic and you can yeah. make it as simple as a walk, or even you could do stuff in your chair. if That's where you're starting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, you know, right now the, the audience is listening and they're saying, okay, Sonia, what can I do today, right after this show is over, that I can start to, in addition to getting the I'm book, I'm going to say, course. go get the book. <laughs> <laughs> Here it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because it really does outline it all very, very clearly. I mean, it's an actual program so that you yeah. want to follow. But what can people do to kind of almost pave the way to starting the program that they can do right now today? Absolutely. A few tips. So I would say, first off, Find that thing that perhaps you're really wanting and give yourself permission. Just what if it were easy? What would you do? I always say, just humor it. You can always go back to the perspective of I can't or it's too scary or what if I fail or any of those things, but just for now and go for a walk and just imagine that. Just give yourself permission 
to just think what's possible because that's often where we stop ourselves too. You know, we won't even visualize it. We won't even dream about it. We won't even let ourselves do that. So just to give yourself for the next 20 minutes or 10 minutes, I'm going to let myself just imagine what would happen if I did this, what would happen if you succeeded? And then this is a question from the book, but it's such an important one because another thing I see that people do is when they have a challenge, they look at the long list of reasons why they can't do it or the things they don't have. And yet we have so many things to make it possible. So look at, well, what are some things you do have? Maybe you have an expertise or a personal experience or you know somebody who knows somebody or you have a education or a certification or you just have the desire is good enough to start, you know, but really list out some of the things that you have. And then with that, what's maybe one step you could take to move in that direction and be kind, be gentle with yourself and just start to take mm-hmm. those little steps. I love that tip so much because very often I think people, when they're thinking about a goal, like maybe it's a really big one, like starting the company, like the great example that you gave or losing a massive amount of weight. You think I can't do it because I don't have the, the qualifications. I don't have the certification or certification, I should say. Right. You know, I don't have the, I don't have that. So who am I Mm -hmm. to try to, achieve that goal or have that as a goal. And when you think about it, when you can pull together on a list, like even make a bullet point list of all of those things that really do add up is a great tip. And then you can wow yourself, I think, when you look at that sheet of paper it does. Or, or the list that you've made in your head. It gives mm-hmm. you a little more confidence. It puts you in that position of realization, all right, I do have some things. And from that perspective, when you're in a more positive perspective, you're so much more resourceful. And then you can tap into Mm -hmm. that place that's like, all right, well, I have that. So then I could do this, but it changes actually your actions very often, as opposed to, you know, I don't have this, 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 and this. And then you go to something harder when really, when you start with what you have, you can go to, it will feed into that next action step that's not nearly as intimidating or overwhelming. Right. Definitely it's a confidence booster. No question about it. All right, Sonia, this was really, really great. I wish you the best of luck with the launch of your first book. Thank you. What if it were easy? And by the way, I really, we didn't go into it, but the story that you tell about how you came up with that title in the intro to your book, it's a great story. And it was like, wowed me. I was like, wow, Mm -hmm. that was really quite resilient of you and your husband. Yeah. I just found that to be a great story that all of you listening, I think you'll really enjoy and be quite motivated by. So, so Sonia really was great. We're excited about the book. There will be links in the show notes, but I always like to leave the Gruff Talk audience with three key takeaways that you really want them to remember from our talk today? What are they? So I'll go with the modicized theme, movement, just move, because movement will change how you feel in so many ways. So whatever that looks like for you, move. Your mindset, shifting that perspective is so key. It really is asking questions that will elicit a better response. So instead of why can't I do this? What's one thing I can do? And so asking good questions that will lead to better actions and then try putting them together to really make it pop. (laughs) So move mind and modicize. Wonderful. And mode of size. I love it. And when I hear the word, you know, reading is one thing, but when you hear it, it's like, I feel like I'm on a motorcycle. <laughs> it's like zooming ahead to my goal, motor sizing, get out there. It does love fast it. track. You know, oh, I best think of luck, Sonia. Where I've really changed. It's like <laughs> manifesting through movement is really what starts to happen. So yeah, it does. Absolutely. Go make we it happen. We love that word too. We love that word too. <laughs> 
Go make it happen, everyone. Yes. All right. Thank you so much, Sonia. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. If you enjoyed this episode of Gruff Talk, please do two things. First, share it with all your friends and family and subscribe to Gruff Talk wherever you listen to podcasts, including YouTube, so you never miss a single episode. Until next time, remember this. We can't control getting older, but we can control how we do it. Talk to you soon. Age Better Podcast is a proud member of the Sound Advice Network. Sound Advice, women's voices amplified.